Do you like wrestling trivia? Then check out the five-star match game, the Pro Wrestling Quiz Show. I'm Joe Gagne, and every episode, I grill three contestants with five rounds of power-packed wrestling trivia. We have over 30 evergreen episodes in the archives covering WWE, AEW, Japan, Mexico, and much, 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 much more. Play along at home and check it out today. Hi, I'm Kay Slow, co-host of the Open the Voice Gate podcast. The one question I'm constantly asked when it comes to Dragon Gate is how do I get into the promotion? Well, stop asking and start listening to the Open the Voice Gate podcast released every Wednesday on the Voices of Wrestling podcasting network. For exclusive news and show reviews, look no further than the leader in Dragon Gate coverage, Open the Voice Gate. This podcast is a member of the Voices of Wrestling podcasting network. Visit VoicesOfWrestling.com to hear the rest of our great podcasts, as well as show reviews, columns, opinions, and updates across the world of wrestling. Here we go! Listening to the Emerald Flow Show on the Voices of Wrestling Podcast Network. Welcome to episode 48 of the Emerald Flow Show. We're a podcast on the Voices of Wrestling Podcasting Network. You can follow us on uh, X at Emerald Flow Show. And uh, if you are uh, on Apple Podcasts, leave us a five star review. And if you listen to us on Google Podcasts, which is going away next year, unfortunately, because I use Google Podcasts, uh, you should probably switch over to us on uh, YouTube. And I know that things are going to be set up where all the podcasts on the Voice of Wrestling Podcast Network are going to have playlists of all their episodes and everything like that. So that's really cool. So think about doing that if you're a Google Podcasting listener and if you feel like donating donate to us at voiceofwrestling.com slash donate uh i'm gerard and i'm here with paul paul how are you doing i'm doing fine and also we're finally reunited after yes uh, we are the last time where we did a bit of an uh, experiment <laughs> of recording things separately <laughs> uh yes uh we'll see what happens if that happens again or whatever <laughs> Um, yeah, it's uh, yeah. We had a few technical issues there as well. Where, yes, uh, unfortunately, at times it sounded a bit like Gerard was phoning in live from the Battle of El Alamein. But uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's uh, and I pro- and my audio probably also wasn't the greatest either. So I think this one should hopefully be a bit smoother. Yes, I think this would be a bit smoother. I think I fixed my mic issues as well. So. Uh, that's good because we have a lot mm-hmm. to talk about and we had some breaking news uh, that at least I woke up to in my time zone. Uh, Jonathan Gresham's going to all Japan. Uh, he'll be yeah, on, that's really cool. He'll be on the Hokkaido tour and uh, he uh, put out a little video where he said he wants to, he's coming for uh, the junior champion Al Lindemann. Paul, your thoughts on this? I think it's really, really cool. That's obviously the biggest get in terms of a foreigner and I don't know, forever, really. A really like, long I, time. I, Yeah, like a really, really long. Because, like, for example, when they started booking Joe, like, he wasn't really, like, like Joe Doring, he wasn't really a big deal. So, mm. yeah, I'm, I'm really trying to, like, we have to go back to, like, people like, what, like, D'Lo, I guess? Yeah. Right? That yeah. would be, like, the, which is a weird comparison, but, like, I think that's, like, the, like, last guy that they brought in that had, like, 
like a foreigner that had like notoriety in the US before. Did they bring D'Lo back after the Wrestle One split briefly? I don't think so. I think his last booking was sometime before because he pretty much, because I think he pretty much retired around the same time the whole like Aces and Eight thing happened. And I think that was similar time frame. Okay. Yeah. So it has been, no, he was in all Japan in 2013. I was right. Okay. So he, oh, he worked a couple of tours because he's in the real world tag team, real world tag team with Kenzo in the Dark Kingdom. Oh God. <laughs> That's why I forgot that. <laughs> Oh, oh, here's a D'Lo Brown versus Go Shiozaki in Kyoto KBS Hall. I wonder, but it doesn't say it was recorded. Yeah. I would love to see that, though. I would love to see that, yeah. Same, um, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, it's been 10 years, though. Like, that's yes, a while. It has. Yeah, because uh, like all of the other guys, like what, who was like the, like in terms of foreigners, what, Sam Adonis? Was like yeah. a with a name or anything like that? Like Yeah, Sam Adonis, I guess you could count... Uh... Joel Redman as well, since he was yeah. WWE before. But again, he was just like a developmental guy. So yeah, now, there was there hasn't really been anyone that I would say is like a name that people like that like the average like American wrestling fan would recognize. Basically, no, uh, this is like the first one, and um, I think oh they're gonna put him in the junior division, uh, which like, they have to. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean he was in the junior division in New Japan too. Yeah. In, in 2019. Um, so there's that. I mean, I think he'll fit in well. Mm -hmm. No, I think style-wise, I think he's a really good fit. I think, yeah, he's like the perfect, like if you want to bring anyone in that I think you can like use really, really well. I think he's the perfect guy. I'm curious what the, if it is anything long-term or if it is just a one true thing because he has a lot of like commitments and impact, right? Right. And he's the junior battle of glory. Like that's the other weird part. Yeah. So, I mean, for all we know, it could be in and then lose to Lindemann and out. I'm kind of afraid that that's what this is going to be, which would be kind of a waste. Yeah, especially since Lindemann's not lighting the whole world on fire with this junior title. No, right. exactly. Like, it, it would be kind of weird if you just have Gresham come in and just beat Lindemann. But also, if he actually is willing to, like, do more tours or whatever then I, I would much rather see him carry the belt because I think he would be motivated as well. Because you just know that a guy like Gresham would just love working all, like, right? Like, if he can make it work and if they can, like, pay him adequately, then I, I'm sure, like, just based on the history, he's someone that would love working for all Japan. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, so, and we got some bit of sad news. Uh, Sunny of Evolution Girls is going to be retiring. Uh, she's going to continue to work backstage for the company. But I've seen both reports like people were saying spinal stenosis and then i translated a tweet from like her account or what maybe it was the evolution account that said rheumatoid arthritis so i mean i'm sure she's in a lot of pain regardless uh, but that's unfortunate given i thought that uh, she was doing well and i thought the whole evolution girls concept was doing well yeah i mean you always have stuff like that right because there's loads of trainees we never even see because they retire before mm -hmm. they ever make the debut. Um, yeah. Or, I mean, we've seen that as well recently with Dragon Gate, right? Where Dragon Gate just has so many different people debut, but then like a good chunk of them retire after like relatively quickly because they get injured. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, obviously, it's a bit more damaging since there were only three of them and now there's yeah. only two of them. Like, yeah, that that's not ideal. So I don't know if there is any like movement to have like a second class essentially if they're already training or not. I, had... I feel like if you if you want to take this seriously now, especially yeah. that there's two, like you need to bring more people in. Yeah, I'm sure that I thought there might have been another trainee, but I don't know whatever happened to them. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, they will probably try to get a couple more trainees. I would assume at this point. Yeah, because they, you already have to bring in a lot of outsiders because. You obviously couldn't let like the three of them just wrestle each other all the time. Yeah. And well, now it's I mean, even more so now there's two of them. Now, now it's basically the same size as the Wrestle One women's roster. Now both of those turned out to be great, but still it's not ideal. Um well yeah, because they were only doing three match shows at Shinkiba. And on the last show when Sonny was injured, they just ran Dan Tamara versus Black Mensa Ray <laughs> as the opener. <laughs> Classic women's match. Yes. Oh yeah, and then Black Mensa Ray. Just went backstage and changed into the ref shirt. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs>
So uh, best wishes to Sonny. Uh, well, mm -hmm. at least he's going to be staying in the business and everything like that. And well, you never know with these people, right? They could return someday. Yeah, I mean, wouldn't be the first time, right? I mean, yeah. it always is when you hear stuff like that, but it's like, oh, this is like the end of their career. But we've seen some very weird stuff of people getting like really bad injuries and then just taking time off and actually being able to come back after time. So, yeah, it's not out of the question, but I think for now, at least, I think it's she's retired and most likely will stay retirement, but but never say never. And uh, so we're going to the show that everyone's talking about. Uh, we are, well, basically it translates to we are fighting detectives uh, that was held on Shinjuku face on, um, I believe it was the 12th um, last week in front of 452 fans, which was a super no vacancy full house build as we both watched the whole show. So we're going to, we're going to start and work our way up uh, from the bottom. First match, Hideki Suzuki defeated you greats. You Izuka in six minutes and 56 seconds with a, uh, from referee stop because of repeated elbow strikes. I mean, this was mostly grappling and I thought it was a little disappointing given the talent involved. Um, It was, I'm not going to deny that. I think we could have gotten more out of that match. But, I mean, it is still the opener, right? And it is Hideki Suzuki. Like, I think there is, like, a very real, like, limit how good those matches are ever going to be. Because when he is kind of on the undercard as well, like, its motivation level isn't necessarily always, like, the greatest. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I wasn't shocked that this match wasn't really a whole lot. But yeah, I mean, it. Uh, I, I will say, okay, I think the best way to say this is like it, this match was kind of what I expected it to be, basically. Okay. Yeah. Like I, I, I went in and was like, okay, this is the opener and it's against a Glead guy. So I don't think Hideki will really take this match too seriously. And so I kind of, my expectations were very much like, it's just going to be a match that is kind of going to be there. And that's exactly what it ended up being. Okay. And then I'm actually trying to uh, actually I'm because I'm trying to look it up right now because I don't because so I was at a hard hit show in uh, 2019 and that Matt and, and the opener for that one I think I'm fairly certain was a young you is like he's still young but like really young like you Izuka against Hideki Suzuki and that match ended in three seconds. Oh. The well, thing is, I can't find it on Cage Match because I don't think Cage Match has that show like on their website. But I'm pretty sure that that's what the opener was because basically you just kind of stormed at him at the beginning of the match. Hideki just instantly took him down into an armbar and just tapped him out. So I'm, I'm like, at least this one went a, a, a quite a bit longer than that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Izuka is slowly but surely making progress. See that that's kind of my argument, but like we're gonna run this match back in like five more years down the line, and then he's actually gonna beat him. Wow. <laughs> uh, uh, next up, we had uh, Hikaru Sato and Brother Yashi defeated Ikuru Hidaka and uh, Phantom Sack Toba in 10 minutes and 41 seconds with uh, Wakita Gatame uh, from Sato on Hidaka. Uh, very, very strange Sato and Yashi pairing here. <laughs> um, yeah, she didn't really do any sort of quasi shoot style that much, but he didn't do anything goofy either. So, I mean, I would say that this was a nice little match. Yeah, surprisingly so, actually. No, I I didn't mind this match either. I think it probably was for the best that, like, for the most part, it was like Sato versus Hidaka. Mm -hmm. Right, because. I mean, those were obviously like the best wrestlers in there, and I actually like like the finishing sequence and everything between them. And yeah, keeping Brother Yashi to a minimum, I think, was the right decision. And yeah, I thought this was just a really solid match. Nothing blow away, but I did enjoy it for what it was. And I was also happy to see Hidaka again because mm -hmm. he, sort of he was the only the one. Indies. Yeah, I mean, he was the only one, right? When they did this whole fake. Uh... Hey, uh, when they did the whole like angle about uh, Los Perros del Mal like getting fired or like leaving Noah, and yeah. he was the only one that actually left Noah. <laughs> well, Kotaro Suzuki. Uh, oh yeah, okay, true. Kotaro Suzuki as well, but like at least Kotaro just popped up in DDT instead. 
yes, and that's true. Elite and all Japan, whereas Hidaka is just like basically fell off the face of the earth. He's, he's still on, really good. He's on like very small indie shows and stuff still. Yeah, um, like if you look at his cage, I actually just looked at his cage match and the promotion he has wrestled for the most this year is uh, 666. Hmm. Well, there you go. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of a shame, but uh, yeah. Um, and then next up, we have Super Tiger defeating Kaite Yano in 11 minutes and five seconds with a kick up. I saw a lot of people say that Super Tiger, this wasn't a good match. Look, Super Tiger is beginning to show his age and everything. But I thought it was a perfectly acceptable match in the middle of the card. I went like three and a quarter on it. And I think Yano's very underrated and everything. Um, yeah, I think this was another solid match. I wasn't really blown away by Super Tiger, but that was probably because seeing him again just gave me like bad flashbacks to the to the previous state of the all Japan junior division because he was pretty much in there like when I think the division was at its lowest. Right? Yeah, it was like so I I was just reminded of Dragon, that. Ultimo Dragon and Kanemaru. Oh, Kanemaru, Tajiri and Ultimo Dragon having like the most boring grapple matches where they both just kind of like light there and just applied very loose holes to each other. <laughs> and then Super Tiger being in like and there, the else not just Super Tiger but there was this phase for all Japan just brought in a boatload of different tigers. Yeah. Like it's Super Tiger. You had like Nosavas, like Black Tiger 7. You even had like Giant Tiger, who I, I think only worked like two shows. And I don't think we ever found out who it was, but I'm pretty sure that was Takayama. Okay. Just from looking at photos, because I don't think it even was a thing that ever made tape. I just remember reading it in the results. And then next up, we had Yuki Ishikawa and Daisuke Sakamoto defeating Daisuke Akeda and Minoru Fujita in 13 minutes and 57 seconds with a modified leg lock from Ishikawa on Akeda. First of all, I have to say, this is the first time in years that Minoru Fujita hasn't sucked. <laughs> he was a perfectly good pro wrestler in this, I thought. Yeah, I, I thought, again, I I would say that I actually, I think I liked the Sato Hidaka match more than this tag match. So... Well, this I was... thought that, I've, the, the, that one was a bit more exciting. This one, this one was solid too, but yeah. <laughs> so I mean, was, yeah. this was just for Akeda and Ishikawa to play the hits. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's kind of what bothered me about it, where it was a bit too much, kind of old guy kind of cosplaying their previous feud. Okay, so thing. Ishikawa is like fifty six or fifty seven. He looks like he's seventy seven. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, he looks like it, it's absurd that like if you look at like other guys that are like his age, if you look at like because he's I think he's like a similar age as like Mochizuki, right? Well, he's older. He's older than Mochizuki, but still like yeah, he lo- he doesn't like he doesn't look like they are within the same decade of life, right? Mm-hmm. Where like Ishikawa looks like so much older than he actually is. It's kind of sad. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think Akeda still looks good for the most part. Yeah, Ike- Ikeda looked solid, and Minoru Fujita also held, held up his end. But yeah, Ishikawa, I don't know. I I don't think he even was really that good. All I remember well is here. Sekimoto didn't really do anything except for throw a couple no. of suplexes, I thought. Yeah, Sekimoto was also very much on like low effort in here as well. But other than that, I like I said, I, f- I thought the match was solid, but I just didn't think that there was anything special about it either. Yeah. And then finally, to the main event that you've all been waiting for, Fuminari Abe defeated Takuya no more in 19 minutes and 16 seconds with an Achilles tendon hold. Uh, I mean, I thought this match was incredible. It'll probably be on my top 10 list. I want four and a half stars. I can understand some of the weird, like, well, why was the audience laughing and everything uh, and that sort of thing. I guess it was sort of like the story of these two friends deciding to just go crazy like this is what happens when friends do stupid things together they end up headbutting each other very hard and kicking the crap out of each other and um yeah i mean i still thought this was incredible though yeah no i also thought it was incredible i also went four and a half stars i don't think i don't know if it will actually make my like match of the year list like my top 10 by the end um because for me like, I, I get that, right? They're friends and everything. Uh, and it obviously wouldn't have made sense to have, like, any kind of hatred in there. But it also, to me, it was just, like, it was just a match to have a match, right? It was just very much a competition, and I thought it was amazing. But it, again, it kind of lacked that, like, 
emotional core I really need to like get fully invested in a match. So like that that will always like hold it back. But I, for what it was, I thought it was amazing. And yeah, it was just incredibly stiff as well. Just uh Abba getting like busted open hard way and everything and just bleeding all over the floor during the finish was an amazing look too. So no, I, I thought this was absolutely amazing. It's just it just falls that slightly bit short for making like that final top ten list, I think. Uh I would hope that given the uh, you know, they drew pretty well here, given that this was like a battle arts tribute show and given all the hype coming out of the main event, I hope they do this again. Yeah. And hopefully it's on Wrestle Universe as well. Well, yeah, I mean, like it was made the whole thing that. very convenient. Yes. And that's probably what got the show all the hype is because it was on Wrestle Universe. It didn't air on Samurai two weeks later. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and also, uh, it's a very easy way to figure out who watched the match legally and who didn't. <laughs> because the people that watched it legally just watched it, whereas the people that watched it illegally are talking about the. Apparently, there was some weird Russian guy who was like doing commentary over the match on like the file that most people procure. Yes, that is a common thing if you go uh, on the high seas. Yeah, no, but like if it's, uh, I think on Vessel Universe was great. If it drew obviously drew really well. I mean, hopefully, it drew like a good. I mean, based on the hype it did, I would assume that like most people that have Vessel Universe at least like checked it out. I would say at the very least, like the foreigners that have Wrestle Universe checked it out. So yeah, I, I hope that means they're gonna do more of this. You know what? They they should do like a really quick turnaround and should do one of these shows around New Year's. I think that that would be the best idea. That's actually a really good idea. Uh, cause yeah, you grab uh, all the tourists. Yeah, exactly. Like me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then so hopefully we will get to talk about the the, the Fuminori Abe and Takuya no more. No more produce again, but we move on next to um, uh, Pro Wrestling Noah because we have to talk about Monday Magic episode one from Shinjuku Face. I did not get an attendance. Uh, it was pretty dark in there. Uh, and I will just say that, yes, this was in many ways very influenced by uh, American TV wrestling. Yeah, I, I thought so too, but I don't think they overdid it. Like they obviously... They unfortunately had some of the staples, like the whole thing starting off of a promo and everything. Yeah. But I, I think they kept away from some of the like more excessive things of American TV wrestling. And I think it was like a really interesting mix, essentially, of like Japanese stylings and like more American stylings. So yeah. I, I actually really enjoyed the show. I did too, actually. It exceeded my expectations, I should say. Yeah. Because uh, nothing really overstayed its welcome, right? Like I no. think that was really the big advantage. Yeah. Um, so first off, we had Ninja Mac defeating Teriyaki, uh, AEW Dark Legend Teriyaki, in five minutes and 31 seconds with a Ninja Bomb. Uh, you know, I mean, Yaki needs some like more experience and everything, but I thought he acquitted himself well. I mean, he worked the crowd, he got some chance, and so I think, uh, I think there's potential there and he'll gain some from Noah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I think so too. He has decent size as well. Yes. So I think that's going to be beneficial for him, especially in a promotion like Noah that is a bit lacking in that regard very often. Mm -hmm. So I I think he's definitely a guy you can kind of like keep. I think he's really young too, right? Isn't yeah. he? Yeah. So I think he's definitely a guy you can keep around and see if you can develop him into something. Uh, but I think the most important part here, though, was like Ninja Mac winning and then getting a shot at the new uh, GHC Hardcore Championship. Hardcore Openweight. Hardcore Openweight Championship, yeah. Uh, I don't know if they really need another belt, but I suppose if Ninja Mac wins it, I wouldn't mind it. Yeah, this very much feels like we don't want to put the junior belt on Gen Ninja Mac right now, but we want him to have a belt. Uh, so let's just make up a new one and then basically build that division around him. I think that's what the plan seems to be here. Yes. Well, I mean, they they could have just kept the junior. Yeah, I don't know why they're so... Well, like, do they have to stop everything just for Hayata? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. We have not seen the last two years of this promotion. It was basically built around two pillars, KG Mujo and Hayata, and one of them <laughs> has retired. The other one yeah. isn't. So we got to keep building around Hayata because, I don't know, reasons. Next up, we had Kazuyuki Fujita, Go Shiozaki, and Junta Miyawaki defeating Manabu Soya, Masa Kitamiya, and Kai Fujimura in 14 minutes and 20 seconds with a Falcon Arrow from Miyawaki on Fujimura. Uh, 
Fujita did his energy drink shtick at the beginning with Go and Junta. Did you see Go reading the label? Yeah. And being like, I don't know if I want to drink this. <laughs> I, I'm really curious what's actually in there. Like the, that, that stuff has to be like awful, right? Like it has to taste like just based on what it probably is. It's probably some weird like herbal like mixture or whatever. Yeah. Um, I thought this was um a solid match and one of the best matches on the show, actually. Just, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, Fujita does his shtick and he's fine in his little spurts, and then everybody else is really good. So I thought it showed. Mm-hmm. I, I really enjoyed Kai Fujimura being a little shit to Fujita. Yes. And just constantly antagonizing him until Fujita then tagged in and just absolutely destroyed him. <laughs> <laughs> I think that that's like the right way to use Vegeta is for exactly like this kind of stuff. Yeah, for sure. But what I will need to say, though, is this was the moment when it became clear that the show is non-canon because uh, Miyawaki got a pin. (laughs) I was just going to say. There's no way this is. We'll we'll see. I guess Fujimura still is considered a rookie. Yeah. But I mean, you like you also have Go and Vegeta right there as well. Yeah. So, so that Junta is the guy that got the pin here. I think that is noticeable, but just watch him be back to just like drop to everyone nonstop. Yeah. And then uh, next up, we had Jake Lee and Anthony Green defeating Ryohei Oiwa and LJ Cleary in nine minutes and 17 seconds uh, when um, Green used the cow killer on, or no, it was uh, uh, Cleary used the cow killer on on Oiwa and then Green mm-hmm. pinned him because this was really just an angle to set up Cleary joining uh, good looking guys. What did you think of this? I mean, it was <laughs> fine for what it was. Mm-hmm. This sort of angle where the partner turns on one another has been done in Japan. Like, you know, it's not uncommon in Japan. So it's not just like they're doing like, you know, Monday Night Raw like thing. But still, especially you know, not a Noah. Yeah. Like, especially not a Noah. That's like a constant thing that happens where like, people turn on each other and an attack match. So, I mean, in this case, though, it was very much a, like, there's no established relationship here between the two of them. So why should I care that he turned on him? Right. Yeah. I mean, otherwise, I mean, it's in as far as how, how LJ is going to do as a heel. So I did actually just see him as a heel at the beginning of the year when Mm -hmm. he worked uh, GWF, uh, not, uh, wait, yeah, GWF, yeah. Um, I kind of briefly got confused with GWF and GFW, but no, it's the one here is the <laughs> German Wrestling Federation. Yes, um, so he I don't he wasn't really super inspiring in that one, but I I also felt like for that entire tournament that like that entire thing his motivation seemed really really low. Whereas here now that he has gotten this shot and Noah and everything, he seems to be really really motivated and. The other time I saw him be motivated as a heel was when he did a show in like Limerick for Phoenix Wrestling, uh, where he like worked heel in the main event of that show, and he he was actually really good because he 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 does have that like shithead energy when he really wants to. So I think he I think it is probably actually better for him to like start off a Noah as a heel, and then be in GLG. I think is going to help him as well. I'm still curious, though. Like, I guess they're going to slot him in as a heavyweight, but that also means he has to. He's like the fourth heavyweight, right? In GLG, then. Yes. Yeah. So probably means he will be like their pin eater. Uh, but yeah, we we'll see how he does. But I think it's definitely a better choice for him than just be like a random baby face on the roster. The only surprise for me that they did this with Oiwa because I thought he was going to be somewhat protected, but I guess not. Yeah, I mean, I think there's only so much as like New Japan that you can do to be like, no, no, you can't drop out our like, you can't drop out our young boy at all. Like, I think you have to do a little bit of give and take at the very least. Like, you can't just have him not get beaten ever. Yeah. And next, and, but yeah, I mean, it, I, it does give him a bit more motivation, though, I suppose. To, like, oh, I'm sure go he'll after be in a singles match. Yeah. Yeah, and that whole that will probably like and that will like set up like the whole like Kaito and him versus GLG and everything. Yeah. And then next up we had uh Takumi Aroha and Neo Momono from Marvelous defeating you and Ryo Kawakata in 14 minutes and 44 seconds with uh the running three uh from Aroha on Kawahara. This is this is the best match on the show, hands down. I <laughs> just a great fast-paced Joshi tag. 
Um, that, this I thought also was the best Joshi match we've had in um, in Noah, actually. Too. Yeah. No, I, I agree on just that. Been like well. what you know, just random. It was some fire here. Random match too, but mm-hmm. you know, I just thought this felt like a real ta- serious tag. Yeah. The other ones always felt like showcase matches. I yeah. mean, again, this was also just a showcase match, but it, it felt like a lot. There was like some interest that, that there was like competitive spirit here, which I think the other Joshi matches and Noah have been like lacking a lot. So no, this very much felt like, no, these are two teams that actually want to win a competition and not just four people that were like randomly scrambled together that are like going to show off all of their signature moves and then leave. So no, I thought this was, yeah, I agree that it was probably the best match on the show. It wasn't the match I enjoyed the most because there was a match that I think is, I, I think the main event is like objectively a like worse match in terms of like in ring stuff. But I think I enjoyed the main event more for what it was. Okay, I see what you mean. Yeah, for sure. And then next up, well, I mean, I hope we get a Joshi match every week then, or every episode. I should say it's every other week. Yeah, I think that's. I think that's. I mean, hopefully, yeah. Uh, but if they're all like this, then yeah, I'm definitely all in favor of that. And then next up, three-way tag match, Yohei and Tadasuke defeated Atsushi Kotoge and Hiroki and Alpha Wolf and Dragon Bane in 11-37. And this was uh, like an elimination match. So um, Kotoge beat, or Alpha Wolf beat Kotoge with Wolf Driver at 718. And then Yohei defeated Dragon Bane uh, with a drop kick at 11-37. And that... Um, well, we'll set, that'll set up something later we'll get to in a minute. Um, and then in the main event, uh, oh, sorry, that match was, well, what you expected, fast-paced, everything like yeah. that. I just thought um, that, I don't know, I thought the Joshi match told like a better, more complete story and everything like that. Yeah, yeah, no, I've, I think this was more like just like a setup for the junior title match, but yeah, I also really liked it. Just You just have these guys go out there and just do kind of crazy like high speed stuff and I mean, everything. I think it's fair to say we're turned a corner in the junior tag division, I hope. Yes. Yes. I mean just what I mean I, like the moment Hayata loses the like single spells, he's gonna be back in the tag division. But uh I mean for now at least I really enjoy what they've been doing with the junior tag division where it's just kind of wild and reckless and a lot of fun. Yeah. And then in the main event, Keno defeated Great Mummy in eight minutes and 24 seconds of the PFS. Uh, the great mummy was Satoshi Kojima, of course. And yeah, I mean, I'm not in love with goofy stuff like that, but I will say that it was done relatively well in terms of, I thought Kojima played the mummy well. And then it was like a slow reveal when he started doing like Kojima stuff, like the machine gun chops in the corner and everything. And the crowd started chanting and then he pulled the mask off and everything like that. Although with at 824, I thought this made Kojima look a bit like a chump. <laughs> uh, you know he was protected before in noah yeah but i think i think we've like i think we safely arrived in the like period of kojima's career where he doesn't care about that stuff anymore and it's also very clear that new japan doesn't care about protecting him either so he kind of wants to just do like kind of like goofy stuff like this now which fair enough so i i don't really mind him getting like dropped out in like eight minutes like you, and you also want to like put over uh, Keno like strong as well. So, but uh, like I said, I really enjoyed it for what it was. Like, yes, it was goofy, um, but I I thought like everyone played like their stuff really really well. Well, I I think like Keno early on was like trying to like get a view of like who the mummy actually is and everything, and the mummy also being covered in like dust basically and just constantly just there was just dust in everywhere in the air. And then obviously like the reveal of like all of the Kojima stuff, the crowd picking up on it immediately. And then the final reveal coming when uh, when the great mummy was like trying to like pull off the armband, realizing there is no armband and then just being like, oh, okay, fuck it. I'm just going to take off the mask. No, I, I think I thought that was actually really funny. Yeah, for sure. Um, I thought um, that, you know, the, the crowd interaction of this and building up to it, I thought also helped, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 no, the, like the fact that, the, like, if the crowd hadn't been into it, I think this definitely could have, then I probably wouldn't have enjoyed it either. Because if they, if they had just done all of that to, like, complete silence, then, yeah, I thought that would have been a wet fart. But the crowd very clearly liked it as well, so that helped me enjoy it as well. Mm-hmm, definitely. 
And um, so, you know, and then, you know, Keno cut a promo and everything. And then on the next uh, episode, Great Muda will be at Monday Magic number two. Yep. <laughs> I. So, is he wrestling? No. I don't even, think what, so? No, I don't think so. They what a do love Muto double would dipping. Have, would they have Muto return at a Shin, in Shinjuku face? It would be incredibly stupid. However, <laughs> we're talking about Noah. Um, I it would say it's extremely unlikely, but I do like kind of Muto double dipping paychecks, like being a commentator on New Japan, while then also doing like appearances as the great Muta and Noah as well. Which and he's getting a WWE very much. paycheck, I have to assume. Yeah, he's getting a WWE paycheck as well. Like he's just everyone just for like minimum amount of work as well, probably like just great hustle from him speaking of which did you see how the like the ratings that wwe's been getting on a bima yeah they seem really bad <laughs> uh just a fraction of like what like um destruction ryo goku did yeah because like the at the way like views on a beam account as well like it's cumulative so it's yeah. just that a total of like one million people at one point like tuned into uh the uh the ryo goku show Whereas the WWE one, like, what was it, like, 200,000 for Fastlane? And then, like, and actually, like, what, like, 10,000 or so for, like, SmackDown or something? I thought it was, like, 80,000 for SmackDown, but I could be wrong. Okay, but no. that's still not great. So like, I, I don't know what actually, like, comparable out, Noah show does. Every, uh, in the hundreds of thousands. like the Yeah, so that's, yeah. <laughs> um. So everyone could calm down. Yeah, like, this isn't... Like the okay, so like the only thing that's kind of crossed my mind with like everyone leaving and there being persistent rumors of like an NXT Europe starting off, that all of the people that have recently left, it's actually for like an NXT Japan thing. But the thing that kind of deters me from that is well, then why did they fire someone like Jiro who they could have used for something like yeah, that? Yeah, 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 yeah. So that yeah. that kind of will start out for me. Also, uh, Nakajima said in the media that. If he was going to AEW and or WWE, he would have told people by now, which seems strange because maybe that was supposed to be secret. But yeah. I got the feeling that he's not going to the states. I just no, uh, which just makes it most likely that he comes out after the uh, Triple Crown. Well, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, but, <laughs> I mean, if there was, a, if he doesn't come out, he's not coming into all Japan. I would assume then, right? No, because that would be the perfect moment to do it. Like, yeah. does that actually happen before or after his last Noah match? It comes the day after his last Corkin match. Ah, last Noah match is the following weekend. Yeah, but he is already a freelancer anyway, so like that wouldn't even matter anyway. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't really matter. Um, so neither of us watched the Sunny Voice 2023 uh, from Yokohama Radiant Hall. Um, there was nothing really uh, notable on that show. I'm just looking at the the um, at the results. Dragon Bane defeated Yohei in 12-15, which I might want to watch. But the main event was just Keno and Alpha Wolf defeating G another amazing Keno has amazing tag teams right now. <laughs> okay. Keno and Alpha Keno Wolf. Keno needs like yeah. yeah. Defeating Jake Lee and Tadasuke in 17-34 with the Keno special on uh Tadasuke, uh, which could be a, a good match. Um but we go to um the show on the 28th at Fukuoka, um, which I'm very curious how this um, thing is going to, like, draw. Like, what are you expecting on this show for drawing-wise? I mean, Jake versus Keno, like, I mean, Keno has been a good draw in the past, right? Yeah. So I think that's definitely, yeah, Jake I don't think is a great draw, but I think Keno at least shot up that number a bit. And then you have, like, the like whole, like, Nakajima's last ever, not, not last ever, but... Like Nakajima's last Noah match. So yeah. I think that should be a draw as well, which again makes me think maybe they hold of him coming into All Japan until after that. Because mm -hmm. if you already know where he's going, that kind of takes away the impact of this being his last Noah match if you know that he's just going to All Japan. Yeah. Um, so yeah. <sighs> Wagner versus Morris, like I really like that match, but I don't think it's going to be like a big drawn anyway right and then otherwise we don't have any like oh yeah we'd have the junior heavyweight a junior tag title match as well but we don't have like a junior title right 
No. So I've got the card. It's Akatoshi Saito, Stein Rogers, and Kai Fujimura versus Muhammad Yone, Taishi Ozawa, and Uawada, Shuji Kondo, Seki Yoshioka, Ninja Mac, Alejandro, and Teriyaki versus Atsushi Katoge, Hiroki, Hajime Ohara, Extreme Tiger, and Junta Miyawaki. Masa Kitamiya, Manu Busoya, and Deki Inaba versus Hideki Suzuki, Saxon Huxley, and Shuhei Taniguchi. That could be a great match. Uh, yeah. Save for one person. Uh, Hayata and Eita versus Daga and Yoshinari Ogawa. Uh, depends to be seen if this Who's is gonna angle, turn? an angle or a match. Who's going to turn? Like, uh, that's just pretty much a guarantee, right? Well, Daga is like now getting uh, featured in Ring of Honor. So I wonder if he might be on his way out. So Ogawa is going to turn on Daga to link back up with Hayata and Eita. Oh, God, no. <laughs> and then for, yeah, GHC Junior Heavyweight Tag Team titles, Alpha Wolf and Dragon Bane. Uh, versus Yohei and Tadasuke, which I expect uh, Wolf and Bane to retain, I suppose, unless they're leaving, is the only reason I see them yeah. losing. No, yeah, I think they're retaining as well, and I think they've already announced that they're going to be in Japan for the rest of the year. Okay, then. So, yeah, and then they're, uh, they're, I would say they're definitely retaining. La, uh, Katsuhiko Nakajima, Noah last match, Go Shiozaki and Katsuhiko Nakajima versus Naomichi, Marfuji, Takashi, Sugera. Also, could be access last match, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that's going to be great, but yeah, yeah, uh, that's a great, great putting in Sugera and uh, Marfuji in there is a great, great idea. And uh, here's Dr. Wagner Jr. versus Jack Morris for the national title. And uh, Paul, who do you, I'm assuming Wagner's going to retain this one since Morris has got the tag titles, right? Yeah, if 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 Morris wasn't the tag champion, then I would say he's winning here, but. Since he is a tag champion, I think Wagner is retaining. I could and see I really hope this, this title at Ariaki calls see him on the second. Yeah. And I hope the challenger is Sawyer. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll see. Because they seem to be doing something in the tag division. They have dropped the ball from the N1 with Sawyer. I mean, he is still really over. Like, so that's why yeah. I'm still hoping that they might capitalize on it, but we'll see. And then in your main event for the GHC heavyweight championship, Jake Lee versus Keno. And it's it's time. You gotta do this. Yeah. It's long overdue. <laughs> yeah. Really, really. Yeah, it's time. Because we've been complaining, right, that Noah is just like, so, like that one of our big issues with Noah right now is that it's just so incredibly sleepy. And it well, just yeah. and Jake Lee with the, the longest transitional reign I can think of. Yeah. Well, no, that's still Sonata. But... <laughs> oh, right. Yes. <laughs> like he's not even the longest current reigning transitional champion in Japan. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, it's long overdue. Like they need someone else here. They need someone that can actually like inject some energy into the promotion. And I think if Keno is champion, I think we're going to look at this promotion like a lot differently than we are right now. Yeah, I think so too. And uh, yeah, I mean, think about this card. You pull Nakajima and Yoshioka, or at least Yoshioka Yoga for the rest of the year after this card. That's a big hit. Yeah. And like, I mean, I said in the past, I thought Noah had one of the best rosters in wrestling. That's uh, not being the case anymore, but once, no. especially once those guys lose. I mean, it's also like, for example, if Nakajima actually does go to all Japan, yeah, then like they're still not the deepest company, but then they actually do have like at least something a little bit. Oh, like pound depth, for pound. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't expect Nakajima to like join all Japan, but I expect him to like be like a freelancer, at least for a couple of months for the whole Kanto rematch sort of arc. Yeah. But then it's the question, what will he do like long term after that? Because it is kind of I know he's been around since forever, but he is still only in his mid thirties. Yeah, like thirty five. So it is kind of prime years for him. So it would be weird if he just spent those bouncing around Indies as a freelancer. Well, Kensuke Sasaki did it. <laughs> True. Actually, you know what? <laughs> I actually hadn't thought of that. You're right, actually. That would actually be very on brand. Well, I mean, he can go to Dragon Gate and do like a Florida Brothers 2.0. I have actually thought about Dragon Gate as well for him. Because he's just like, because he obviously would be like one of the biggest guys there. And I think that would be really interesting. It's just then him leaving. I, I mean, I don't think it was ever a money thing anyway for him leaving Noah. But no. It would still be like weird if he just goes to Dragon Gate. So now we move on to All Japan. Uh, we've got a couple of notes. Paul, did you watch the All Asia Tag Team Title Match in DDT from October seventh in Sanjo? And no, I actually haven't watched. Okay, that well, one. I'll give a very quick report. Junakiyama and Katara Suzuki defeated Takawa Mori and Yoshitatsu in fourteen oh two, 
when Akiyama pinned Omori with a wrist clutch, wrist, wrist clutch exploder to make their first defense of the titles. I thought it was actually a nice little match considering the like Kataro Suzuki at what 43 44. Mm-hmm. This is like the youngest guy in this match. Um, <laughs> and there was some good heat from the crowd whenever Omori and, and Akiyama would, would, would um, face off. So, yeah, I mean, it's 14 minutes. It's worth a quick watch. I'm, I'm going to say three and a quarter, three and a half range. A nice little match. Um, and then Yukio Sakaguchi and Hideki Okatani came out to challenge, and they're going to challenge on November 3rd at Shinjuku Face for in DDT. So the titles remain in DDT for a little longer. Um, and then on Ultimate Party in Ryogoku on November 12th, we've got Shinshiro Takagi, Akito, Makoto Oishi, and uh, Shinichiro Kawamatsu, who's that politician guy, versus Yoshitatsu, Yoshihiko, Danchuko Dino, and Super Sasadango Machine. <laughs> That's a weird team. <laughs> yes. What do those guys talk about? I don't know. Um, and then Jun Akiyama, Harashima, and Yukio Naya versus Voodoo Murders, Saito Brothers, and Toshizo. So you think this is going to end with the... I mean, but the Saitos are like the All Japan Tag Champions now, so it would be great if they challenge for the All Asia Tag Titles. But I mean, obviously, this... I mean, Toshizo... I guess Suwama? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, he is. But like, I, I assume this will eventually like result in Suwama challenging for the titles with someone, right? Yeah. Or maybe Suwama and Naya like, uh, reconcile... Has he actually ever held that belt? Because he got pushed really fast. Yeah, no, I don't think I don't remember a Suwama. I don't, yeah, no, he's never. He has no. that's like the one title he's never won. Yeah, yeah. Of the one title in all Japan, champions he's never would have been good. Yeah, um, I think that's definitely an option. But I mean, him and Naya actually would be an interesting team. Yeah. So we go to uh, all Japan raising an army memorial series on October eighth in Yam. Manobe S Park in front of 333 fans. Ryuki Honda defeated uh, Koki Iwasaki uh, with the final event in 10 minutes and 9 seconds. I thought this was a very solid opener. I like Iwasaki in all Japan. He's a good guy in the mid card to fill out the card, and Honda is really feeling it right now. Yeah, I think Honda is great at the moment. Like he's just really firing on all cylinders, mm-hmm. and yeah, I. And it also seems like they're actually like being consistent now about pushing him because there was at times, right, where they like were always like when like plans fell apart because someone most often Ashino got injured, where they like then just basically dropped them out. Whereas now they seem to be consistent about like, no, this is a guy that we're actually pushing now. Yeah. And then um Hatsuki Aoyagi and Rising Hayato uh versus Hikaru Sado and Koji Iwamoto went to a time limit draw. 15 minutes um well we'll get to this later but iwamoto has been protected since returning which is interesting but this was a very solid match i thought yeah uh yeah i I like the match as well it it is very interesting that they did go to a time limit draw because Mm -hmm. i mean you could have in theory just like dropped out sato here right that wouldn't have been an issue even if you want to protect iwamoto Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, I did say kind of when we did our separate recordings that I do think Iwamoto is actually one of the guys that has a chance of winning the Junior Battle of Glory. Yeah, definitely. Because I, I mean, to me, that would also mean that he is resigning in January. Yeah. Uh, but I, I mean, they definitely seem to be building something with him, and I think they, I think he's the guy that takes the title off of Lindemann. Would if they don't sense. have like Gresham do it, then I think it is going to be Iwamoto. Oh, Iwamoto versus Gresham would be, I would love to see that. Oh, that would also be, I would actually prefer that, to be honest. Yeah. Um, and the next up, Hideki Suzuki and Takuya Nomura defeated Yuma Anzai in, in real Inoue in 11 minutes with a double arm suplex from Suzuki on Inoue. This is awesome. Yeah. Whole Suzuki and Anzai stuff is awesome. Like Suzuki just being a dick, as Suzuki does, and then Anzai like finally struggling through to like hit a suplex or whatever on. Suzuki, they just have great chemistry of the old guy and the young guy. Mm-hmm. And everyone else in this match is obviously great too, but I just love this match. I thought it was the best match on the show. Yeah, I thought this was great as well. I always love that, like the chemistry between uh, Takuya Nomura and Hideki Suzuki because Hideki was Takuya's uh, mentor when he started out. So like they have like that dynamic going on and yeah i think i'm i would really like to see uh hideki versus anzai singles match 
like and they get had to I think, put Anzio. I mean, that would probably like require a lot of like convincing, but I think you could probably talk him into it at so uh, like after a while, like maybe not this year, but maybe like next year. I mean, if Hideki is kind of maybe a bit more on his way out out of Noah, right? If he's not going to be like if he is like taking more outside bookings, if you can convince him to do the champion carnival, then I would totally like do that match there. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Hokuto Mori defeated Dan Tamar in 12 minutes and 29 seconds with the Mudo Essen. I thought this was a very solid match, like three and a half uh, range, um, just sort of keeping Omori strong because at this point he drops through every all the other heavyweights mostly. Yeah, but I think it's fair. Like to me, like I like him, but he is just clearly kind of a step behind the others in terms of like work rate. Yeah. So yeah, I think it's fine to kind of give him some wins still. A but... Team, I think. Yeah, yeah, he needs to be a tag guy. Like I think well, that's with the, the guy best thing for him. with a guy that's like a regular, not Minoru Suzuki. Even though yeah. that was a great match that they had against Kento and Yuma, like he needs like a long term tag team partner. Yeah, I actually thought him and Honda would have been a good team, but uh, yeah, it seems like they're forging ahead with the Anzai uh, Anzai Honda team instead. So yeah. I don't see like a natural like regular tag team partner for him on the roster right now. No. But it should maybe maybe Nakajima. <laughs> maybe Nak yeah, actually would be. Because then that's yeah, he can do the falls in those matches. And they and they both have like that dickhead energy as well. Yeah. And then uh All Japan World Tag Team title skirmish, Yuma Aoyagi, Kento Miyahara, and Suwama defeated Jun Saito, Rei Saito, and Kono in twenty six oh one. Uh when Aoyagi pinned June with the uh, fool. Um well we'll get to tomorrow's match, the or sorry, the following match from the next day. Uh, but, uh, you know, a little long, but solid enough. I mean, better than I thought it would be for a 26-minute match featuring those other guys on the Voodoo Murders team, I suppose. Yeah. And not exactly known for being, like, stamina monsters. No. Uh, no. So, but, yeah, I, I thought this exceeded my expectations as well. Uh, yeah, I didn't think it was anything great, but solid enough as well. The one thing I will complain that it did, kind of give away the result of the title match but yeah what, what can it do yeah speaking of exceeding expectations we go to <laughs> raising an army memorial series on october 9th in kakuda city general gymnasium in front of 1687 fans now i should also note that the city of kakuda or maybe you want to call it a town only has a population of twenty eight thousand people <laughs> now yeah, like i can't overstate how good that number is they were running a, a, a shuttle bus from the train station to the venue. Yeah. Like it's the best, it's the second best number in the entirety of Miyagi Prefecture in 2023. Yeah. Like the only thing that drew better was a Michinoku Pro show, which was also Jin, the, that was the Jinsei Shinzaki anniversary show. That yeah. was the only show in the, in the entire prefecture that drew better than this one. Like no New Japan show like drew more fans than this one. So like, and it's in the middle of nowhere. If you actually look at where, where the city actually is, like it really is like just kind of just middle of nowhere, Japan, basically. It is very impressive. Yeah. Um, and so to open the show, Takao Mori defeated Yoshi Tatsu in 604 with the Axe Bomber. Perfectly competent wrestling match between two older guys, I thought. But really, Omori pinning Yoshi Tatsu, I think is a story. Yeah. Like he is on his way out. Should we basically speculate that some more? I, I don't... Is it basically he just keeps dropping falls all the time he has matches in all Japan? I think it's pretty obvious. <laughs> yeah. Uh, should we terrorize DDT fans some more? Oh, well, I mean, someone needs to take the title off of uh, Brooks. So, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. And I mean, he's getting more and more DDT bookings and everything like that. Yeah. No, I I, I do think actually that is kind of what is happening here. Because like, again, who took the fall in the match... And the All Asia title match. Mm -hmm. That was Takao Mori. And who won when they faced off in a singles match in All Japan? Yeah. No, like I think it's kind of obvious that one promotion is like, oh yeah, we don't want this guy to take a fall. Whereas the, whereas the other promotion is like, yeah, we don't really care if you get dropped out. Like it seems like that is in our interest right now. Mm -hmm. So I think it's to me, it's pretty clear that like he is going from All Japan to DDT. Because what other like really like logical location is there for him, unless he goes to like Kyushu Pro? And he can do all the stupid shit and have a faction and stuff. 
yeah oh yeah he can do like some weird like comedy stuff and everything he can like revive the yoshitatsu kingdom mm-hmm. of like i don't know dan shokodino and mm-hmm. super Balian. machine yeah Oh yeah, Balian. Oh yeah, right. Balian is there. Is there anyway? Yeah. So he can also like hang out with all of the like Brooks and Friends guys. Yeah. Because I think he has like a bit of an end with them as well, right? So yeah. Yeah. And then uh, three way match. Uh, Kono defeated Black Mensa Rain Aizawa number one in three minutes and thirty three seconds with the ready knee on Mensa Rain. Uh, there's nothing really to say about that battle, no. except you know they kept it short, so we can't bury it or anything. No. Yeah. I I literally remember like I saw the match starting and I think. I went to make myself a cup of tea and a match was over before yeah. I came back. <laughs> Hikaru Sato and Takuya Nomura defeated Atsuki Aoyagi and Rising Hado in 11 minutes and 58 seconds with a walkie get, get to Tame uh, from, on, from Sato on Hayato. Again, another solid little match there. Mm-hmm. I thought they, yeah. I wish they would give these guys like 15, 20 to just really rip. Yeah, yeah, that, that, I mean, that's all, I think that's my biggest, I mean, that is kind of a good complaint to have though, right? That's why like, oh yeah, these guys are so good on the roster where I wish these these would get more time rather than be like the roster is so thin that like, oh God, we need to watch 10 minutes of this match. Because yeah. I don't think we really have that anymore on the All Japan roster now. No, well, nice. think, for, for, remember for years, one of the problems with All Japan, like, I don't know, after Wrestle 1 split to about, I don't know. Pentel- this year? <laughs> no, but was like, there was a, while there, especially from 2013 to 2015, where they were letting matches go way too long. Oh God, yeah. Because they, I mean, they, they had no one. Thing. That was the problem. Yeah, because the roster was five show. people. Yeah. So anyway, they had to stretch the shows to two hours somehow. So they had to like let Super Tiger go out there and wrestle for 20 minutes. <laughs> and then uh, Ryuki Honda and Yuma Anzai defeated Hokuto Mori and Koki Iwasaki uh, when Honda pinned Iwasaki again. With the final event in eleven eighteen, again, another solid match. And Paul, actually, you know what I realized? I thought when I was watching this match, I was Saki no Mori would be a good tag team. Actually, yeah. If if well, the thing is, Iwasaki seems like a guy that wants to like stick to his local area. Yeah. But if he's willing to do it, I think that actually would be a good one because again, in that team, then Omori wouldn't be the pin eater either because right. Iwasaki can obviously just be the pin eater. Yeah. So. I think that actually would be a good one. I well. still think you can get uh, Iwasaki on more uh, confirmed dates than Minoru Suzuki, though. Yeah, because everyone kind of wants to book Suzuki, and that's really been the issue with this whole faction. Like, I mean, it's not even like because they have the same issue or not in New Japan, right? Where like strong style hasn't really done as well as people thought they would, simply because yeah. Minoru Suzuki is never there. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, well, yeah, he's also going off here. to the states. Yeah, uh, he's still like. Break glass in case of emergency booking for AEW. Exactly. He gets bookings in like Europe as well. So like he's just in too much demand. Well, yeah. yeah, you probably need someone else there if you actually want like a regular tag team partner. Yeah. And then next up, uh, Jinsei Shinzaki, Hideki Suzuki, and Koji Iwamoto defeated Suwama Dan Tamar in Rio Inoue in 1444. The Nenutsu powerbomb from Shinzaki on Inoue. Again, uh, I liked watching uh, Shinzaki and Suwama tie it up actually in this. <laughs> that was fun because that's a novelty. Mm-hmm. And again, yeah, those two have, haven't really crossed paths too many times, right? No, I ever. I'm not sure. Uh, so it's Yeah, only... which is weird because you'd think because they've been around for long enough and it's just never really happened. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, you know, good match because everybody else, you know, could carry this thing with like Hideki and Iwamoto. And yeah, and you want to and you want to get Shinzaki on like your Miyagi show because he's a draw. Yeah, so that was a good so. semi main. Yeah, and then to the main event for the World Tag Team Championship, June Saito and Ray Saito defeated Kento Miyahara and Yuma Aoyagi in thirty seven minutes in twenty seconds when June pinned uh, Aoyagi after the double impact, aka the Doomsday Device, to win the titles, which I was absolutely positive after the the result on the day the show the day before but i also kind of felt like they had to change the titles here after watching this match <laughs> yeah <laughs> holy you, shit they were you over. They the were territory so they, like you could like you drew just just drew this amazing house in this city and you would have burned the city forever like next time you come like next time you would have come there you probably would have drawn like a hundred people well maybe they learned this from driving out zeus in osaka so many times yeah, true. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, like, 
Wait, which which show Drew actually drew more? Was it the show where Zeus won the triple crown? Yeah, yeah that was in like Osaka, 2400. Or did this no, draw more? No, that, that drew 2400. Okay. But it's not as much of a difference as it should be given the size of the venue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, this match was incredible. I mean, it yes. was an old school tag team match with Kento and Yuma being the heels, trying to make the younger team. Well, actually, the setters are older than both of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, I think you might want to. The young and up, the, the, up <laughs> the, the up and coming team, I'll say. Uh, like, you know, the setters dominated early on and then. They're like 10 years older than Yuma. <laughs> Kento and Yuma, like, dominated for a bit. They they read the, well, maybe this is the plan all along, but they read the crowd and became incredible heels. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, I yeah, know. Like, they, they, very easy, they were very clearly, like, picked up on what the mood here was and just adjusted to that great. Like, I think the whole thing, like, kicked into another gear when Yuma, like, ripped up the banner of the Saitos in the stands. And started eating it. Oh yeah, and like that was incredible. The entire like arena, like this, like it looked like they were like about to riot. <laughs> yeah, I mean the crowd heat for this was amazing. Yeah, which helped make this match. Um, and just like some great near falls towards the end. I mean, it was obviously Kento and Yuma in the driver's seat of this, but the Saitos held up there and well and didn't like mm-hmm. touch anything or anything like that. Um, you could critique some of the crowd brawling. Felt like it went on for a little too long, but then it it, it sort of mm-hmm. climaxed with the uh, Yuma ripping and eating the poster, which I thought sort of made up for it. Yeah, uh, I actually yeah. went four and a half stars on this match, and I'm considering putting it on my top ten. Uh, I don't think I will go that high, but yeah, I I went like four and a quarter on it. Yeah, I thought it was great as well. I was really impressed actually with the side of stamina. I mean, we were talking about it earlier, right? With them going 26 minutes. But I didn't think it was really like super noticeable that they had to go 37 minutes here, which is obviously by far the longest match they've ever had. Yeah. And I don't think, because if you had told me before that like, oh yeah, the Saitos have a 37 minute match, that they would be like gassed in a really, really bad way. Okay. And yeah. I don't don't think they really, like they obviously were gassed, but not like that it was like really like that it dragged the match down. Like, mm-hmm. I think they still, like, made it work. And obviously, it helps that it was a tag match. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, I, I thought the side was more than held up their end of the bargain. And then, obviously, like, and that's really the thing, right? That's how good Kento and Yuma are. Like, yes, you just kind of need to be solid on the other hand. And then those two will just do the rest to just make it a great match. Yeah, the crowd also helped, obviously. Yes. Oh, yes. And, no, obviously, and, the crowd just... But, like, I absolutely... never heard Kento get so much heel heat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Because there's been times when he has, when he's like Vincent Kiba beating up like the younger wrestlers that the crowd loves, Mm -hmm. the hardcores love. But this was like another level. Yeah. And like I said, they picked up on it really well. Now now I'm actually wondering if Kento does the whole like getting the crowd to chant for him before every match, not just because it really works for his character, but also because it's a really easy way for him to gauge the crowd right like yeah. if he gets like heel heat while he does that he will work more as a heel and if the crowd just cheers for him then he will just work as a baby face and here obviously when he did it at the beginning the crowd just booed the shit out of him and he's like okay i know how, how we're gonna work this one so uh this match for a couple of days on cage match went with one rating just mine and i gave it a nine <laughs> it now has 11 votes and an average of 8.33, and that includes nine nines, a seven, and a six. And I felt like this match got no buzz until I tweeted something out on the Emerald Flow Show Twitter mm-hmm. account. And then Striga from Eastern Larry had quote tweeted and says, you got to watch this match. And so <laughs> slowly but surely, we have been gaining momentum on trying to convince people that how amazing this match was. And yeah, like, as no, you can see I on the thought... ratings on Cage Match, the vast majority of people who do watch it love it. Yes. I felt like, again, like I get if you're not a guy that is into the Saitos that looking at it and being like, it's 37 minutes that you would be like, oh God, no, I will absolutely not watch that. But like, I think that if if you watch this match and you still think the Saitos are like irredeemably awful, then you will just never, like, I don't, I don't think you will ever like get into the Saitos ever, but like, just watch this match, I think, with an open mind, and I think you will be positively surprised. Yes. It also didn't feel like 37 minutes, I thought. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also looked at, so I looked at the German comments as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, the one, uh, there's two German comments. One is from, well, one is from Striga, but it's written in English, but I think because 
Right. You probably wrote it on the German page to get booted to the German part. And the other one is from someone else who is also the guy that gave it the lowest rating, which is a six. <laughs> but he was still like, he was like, uh, like to kind of paraphrase it, uh, it was like an interesting change of pace. Uh, it worked great for the local crowd, uh, mm. but he was unimpressed. Uh, uh, he doesn't think that the Saitos uh, uh, will ever be like the Heart Foundation. Right. But he thought it was pretty cool and it was something different. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if that's, guy, that's the guy that so far has lay, like rated it the lowest, like it's still pretty positive throughout. Yeah. I think that's saying something too. For sure. And then we go to the show on October 12th in Shinkiba Free String in front of 266 fans. That's down a little from what they've been doing there lately. But this is a Thursday show going head to head with that Battle Arts tribute show, actually. Yeah, I think um, there's a lot of people that would have gone to this that went to that instead. So I didn't get to see the whole show, but I did watch the main event first because I saw those results and I'm like, I got to watch this. And it was Kento Miyahara and Rising Hayato defeating Yuma Aoyagi and Atsuki Aoyagi in 29-23 uh, when uh, Kento pinned Atsuki with a shutdown German suplex. I I'm, I mean, this was a very good match. I just was just kind of disappointed because... These guys have had better matches that have gone like 30 minutes. <laughs> is how I would say this. Mm -hmm. uh, is that result going to make you change your mind on the outcome of the Triple Crown match? Uh, well, see, like they had their press conference like yesterday or the day before. And they were bringing up like, oh, you must never beat Kento in a Triple Crown match and everything. Mm -hmm. I honestly don't know. Uh, but I'm still leaning towards Kento, I think. Yeah. Just because like I don't know I don't know who you put Yuma in with the main event at Yoyogi. Yeah. Well, I would go with Ashino. Yeah, if he's ready. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah. And I don't know if he is. So yeah. And to me, the other thing as well is like and I said that last time. Is, and we don't know if to not me, it would it would be the yeah, to me it would also be the perfect time to end the Yuma title reign. Because you've kind of booked it like about as well as you could, like a first rain right because you don't want to like overdo it on the first rain either because obviously he's going to win this title again yeah like i don't think you can call this anything except a massive success right. and, Just and, and both and business and an in-ring quality kento's first rain went over a year because there was nothing else to do yes exactly like who, who else are you going to put it on yeah so yeah, yeah uh, west now like and that way like he still has something to overcome because you get you've given him a lot in this rain Right, you put him over Kojima, you put him over Suvama, you establish something with two younger guys in Omori and uh, and um, four defenses uh, in the first reign. Yeah, and he and he beat Nagata to win the title. Like it yeah. was a great success, and now it's the perfect time to end it. And you still have there's something Yuma still needs to do, which is beat Kento in a triple crown match. Because mm -hmm. if he does that, then he's kind of done everything. Mm -hmm. So if you have Kento beat him here, then like that's how you can basically like that's something then you can build this match again when Yuma wins the title again and I don't know like a year or two years or however long like you want to put a break in between the title reigns and then basically yeah. you can like build this up again where like Kento will then after like a bit of a title reign will challenge uh, Yuma again for the title but this time Yuma wins. Like I right, think that exactly. act, that makes that match like so much bigger. Now then yeah, you could and, actually put that in a bigger building as well. And there's um there might be an Ashino title reign in there between. I don't know. We'll see if yeah. how serious they were yeah. about that. Um, Maybe we get an Anzai title reign. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or if Nakajima does come in, then I actually think he might like this might be a really short Kento reign. Because then I think maybe Kento actually like loses it to Nakajima and New Yogi. Oh, you think so? Yeah. I, I, I mean, if it is if for the title, the that triple, would if you're sense. putting the triple crown on, if you're putting the triple crown on Nakajima, just have Yuma face him in it, Yoyogi, because then then Nakajima's yeah. going two zero on Kento. But oh, you mean he faces? Oh, right. So he, Kento loses here, and then you you do Yuma versus yeah. Nakajima at Yoyogi. Yeah, and then you do, and then you do Kento versus Nakajima at the New Year's show at the New Year's Korokan. I don't what, know. That, that feels like really you, quick turns around. I don't know. We'll, we'll you see. Want a bigger, you want a bigger venue for that. Yeah, yeah true. Um, I'm just being selfish here. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, so we'll go to the beginning of the show. Naruki Doi and Naoki Tanizaki defeated Black Mensa and Kenichiro Arai. 
in 856 with the Bakatara sliding kick from Doi on Mensa Ray. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of comedy in this, but I thought Arai and Doi had some great interactions, actually. Okay. Yeah, I unfortunately didn't get to watch, uh, didn't have time to watch the show. Um, and then we had Hokuto Omori defeating Dan Tamara again with uh, Muso Isen. And again, another solid little match. Um, All Japan versus DDT, Yukio Sakaguchi and Higureki Okatani uh, defeated Takao Omori and Yoshitatsu in 726 uh, with the Kami no Migihiza uh, from Sakaguchi on Yoshitatsu. Uh, again, see who took the pin there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this was solid, I thought, because they kept it pretty short. And uh, that's all I saw from the show. Um, <laughs> but from my feet, from the vibe I got, Suwama defeating Koji Iwamoto, Koji Iwamoto in 1347 with the sleeper hold felt like one of those initiation matches. And I got yeah. the feel that Iwamoto is going to be hanging around. And he got way more time than Abe did yeah. against Suwama. Yeah. That's a competitive match against Suwama in the mid card. Yeah, so yeah, I, 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 it kind of feels similar to some of the stuff they were doing with uh, Nomura when he was coming back. Yeah, and hopefully then, this one ends better. <laughs> and then we go to the preview on the twenty first. Uh, this is not the actual match order. Actually, you know what? All Japan just put up the new match order. I saw this morning, so let me get that here. Um, first match: Takao Mori and Yoshitatsu versus Atsuki Aoyagi and Rising Hayato. Paul, I said this was going to be an upset for the juniors, and I still believe that. And you think you think Atsuki and Rising are winning this? I mean, I mean that's just full on confirmation, and right that Yoshitatsu is leaving if he takes a fall here. Yeah. Although, I mean, Omori isn't above taking a fall to a junior either. Like he tapped out to yeah. Hikaru Sato like a yep. few years back. Yep. So, so that's very possible too. But I think this is yeah. going to be in your upset. Oh um, yeah, yeah, I think probably. I could see like Aoyagi getting a surprise pin on one of the heavyweights, and then like Yuma losing the main event. Ah, so they do like a thing where it's like, hey, your brother got to be the heavyweight, so you got yeah. to lose to Kento. <laughs> uh, of course, it's a 15-minute time limit draw, and you can never discount that. Actually, um, that's also very possible, yes. Special singles match, Dan Tamar versus Sinya Aoki. Expect a lot of grappling, but I'm looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, All Japan... Yeah, I, I, I'm really been enjoying this whole feud as well. Uh, All Japan versus DDT. Shuji Shikawa. Renai Abe and Black Mensa Ray versus Shanshiro Takagi, Hiroshima, and Yukio Naya. Um, we can figure out who's taking the pin there. Yeah. I mean, it's also kind of random. Like, a, yeah. Like I said, because previously it was just more like erupt, or like, er, like it started out as eruption versus evolution. And now it's just yeah. kind of more like a general thing. Like, none of the original people are even like still involved in this match. Yeah. And then Minoru Suzuki, Naruki Doi, and Hokuto Mori versus Hideki Suzuki, Koji Iwamoto, and Ryo Inoue. I think that could be good, but um, anyway, he's yeah. gonna. He's yeah, gonna I mean, you know, he's gonna take the fall. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now this is listed on their website for the just for the All Japan TV certified six man titles. It's Yukio Sakaguchi, Saki Akai, and Hideki Okatani versus Suwama, Mayumi, Ozaki, and Maya Yukini. And Paul, I have to bring this up, but Eruption announced that they're gonna vacate those KOD six man titles after the um. Ultimate party on the twelfth of November twelfth, mm -hmm. which is Saki Akai's retirement show. Yeah, I mean, like, I would assume that they're losing this year, because, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, just for curious because I just looked it up. So I just looked it up out of curiosity. This is only the third time that uh, Minoru and Hideki will actually be in the same ring. Oh wow, I didn't realize. Yeah. That. Interesting. Like they've only they've only done it twice. One once was in twenty fourteen. In real Japan, yeah, when it was uh, Akitoshi Saito and Minoru Suzuki versus uh, Hayato Mashita and Hideki Suzuki, mm -hmm. and the other one was at the uh, in 2019 at the uh, Takia Mania Empire Two, which was Hideki, which where uh, Hideki and uh, Minoru were actually teaming together against uh, Masato Tanaka and Marufuji. Interesting. So that's something to look out for then, for sure. Yeah. Like they have, yeah. it would be a real shame if they if we never got a singles match between them. Yes, but, I know it would yeah. be, uh, but I don't know if that's ever going to happen. <laughs> and, uh, so I think Suwama, Ozaki, and Yukihi holding those titles would be actually pretty good. Oh yeah, especially now that like it's really dysfunctional because Suwama is no longer a heel. Yeah. So like his his, his other they, partners are just like dastardly heels, and he's just like, no guys, we need to do good. <laughs> well, I think Ozaki and Yukihi didn't want to even 
be in the Smash Bros. Yeah, yeah exactly. Story. Like it's going to be very dysfunctional. I mean, yeah. to be fair, the original plan probably was for this to be Onagi and then she got injured. Yeah. So is she back? Did she work um, that show in the States? Um, Sukibon? I think she was booked for it. Yeah. But I don't know if she actually. Oh, yeah. No, she did work it. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, so she has been back. Yeah, so she has been wrestling in Jap- uh, in the US actually, or in Japan as well. She actually worked a GCW show. Right. Okay. And so. she also worked on Saturday in West Coast Pro. Okay. So, so yeah, 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 yeah. But we'll see. Whatever. Maybe they lose. I don't know. And they just yeah. I mean, who's gonna make a big deal if they just vacate those six man titles when they vacate? It's what they do win. all the time anyway. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> But I, I'm saying I could see them winning that, and I think it would be good. Um, and then the 51st anniversary match, Ryuki Honda and Yuma Anzai versus Jun and Rei Saito. Mm-hmm. I think Honda um, and Anzai are winning here, and then challenge mm-hmm. them on the Hokkaido Tour. Oh, you think we're going to get another title challenge before the Real World Tag League? Yes, because they got to fill those Hokkaido shows. Ah, okay. At the end of the month. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Yeah, so, yeah, in that case, I can definitely see it, that they're going to... Uh, my thing, though, is that I was kind of thinking that Anzai and Honda could actually win the real world tag league yeah. and then challenge the Saitos in January. Because I, I don't think the Saito reign is going to be a long reign. Right? No. But... So, but do you think they're like instantly losing it on their first defense? I mean, no. What I could see is, though, like them doing a whole match series. Like Honda and Anzai win this one, then the Saitos win the, 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 the title match in Hokkaido. The Saitos mm-hmm. win the, well, either the Saitos, yeah, the Saitos win the block match in the real world tag league, but Anzai mm-hmm. and Honda win the tag the league. The tournament. And mm-hmm. then Honda and Anzai beat them at like Yoyogi or Korkin in January. Yeah, I could say that. Actually, that would make sense, yeah. yeah and then we'll that see. way you get like, the titles onto Anzai I would assume and that, I would assume the real world tag league ma- teams are coming on this show. Yeah, yeah, I mean. It, so, you know, there could be a team that have to be okay, announced. Yeah. They're going to win. Uh, is a Kento and Nakajima team out of the question? Ah, that would be so weird. <laughs> it would be very on brand for Kento, though, because he loves setting stuff up like that, right? Yeah. He loves teaming with guys that he will then feud at with afterwards. Mm-hmm. But I mean, there is already an established feud. And I don't know, like the way they build that up, like that would, I think, be too much of a like, can they coexist tag team partners? Because this isn't just like, because with. You had like tensions there when he teamed with Takuya and Amora. But like this was like there was like actual hatred between them in like the like singles match that they had. So it would just be weird if they were like tag team partners now. Yeah, for sure. Like also with the way that ended as well. Like if they had shook if they had like shaken hands afterwards and I'd be like, Yeah, okay, it's water under the bridge. But that's not at all what happened after the match. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Yuma and uh Nakajima though, yeah. I could maybe I would assume their human cantor split up. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I would say that as well. And then you could do like Nakajima and Yuma and then Kento oh. with I don't know, someone. Yeah. Or well, Takuya again. You never know. Yeah, sure, why not? Um or Ashino. Then, yeah. And then in the main event for the Triple Crown Championship, Yuma Oyagi versus Kento Miyahara. We sort of already talked about this. Still leaning towards Kento at this point. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm still leaning towards Kent as well because it just makes the most sense to me, like the way this feud has gone, or the way this ti- the way you must title reign has gone. I think now is now is the perfect time. Like you peak it at just the right moment, you take it off of him, uh, you put it back on Kent, so you kind of keep the promotion hot as well, mm-hmm. and you know that you now have like a second bullet in the holster, basically, that you can rely on to draw as champion, which is a really good thing for all Japan. Uh... Breaking news for this morning from Tenru Project. Dan Tamer and Suwama defended their United National Tag Team titles against Kohei Sato and Sushi successfully. Oh, God. <laughs> well, thank God they defended it. Like, that would have been a bit of a downgrade there as champions. Yes. So that's all Japan. I mean, they are... Is fire too strong a word, Paul? Or should I say they have a strong level of momentum? I think they uh, they have a very strong... Like, I think they are, like, on fire. Uh, yeah, no, I think, you know what, for their standards, they definitely are. Because, like, yeah. they've done, like, and they've had, like, consecutive shows above, like, a thousand and this, like, great draw, like, Miyagi as well and everything. So, no, I think they're definitely, like, 
on fire right now. I believe they uh, had to open up more pre-sale tickets for the Cork, this Cork and show because the ones that they usually yeah. make available sold out. Yeah, which kind of makes me a little bit afraid for like the the I I mean, luckily your Yogi is so large that I don't think I have to be afraid of not getting tickets. There, but, yeah. um, there's still tickets available, but they they had to open up more. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So no, no, no. I'm, which I'm going to sign. assume that this breaks a thousand. And yeah, it has, it has to actually. I think. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that, that's like the, your biggest title match that you can do. Yeah. So, and look, it broke a thousand with Honda. Like it broke a thousand with Honda. Yeah. If you do like this, like I don't know, that has to be like really weird circumstances where this doesn't break a thousand. Yeah. Uh, I think. Well, they got to surpass Honda, so I think twelve hundred, thirteen hundred at least, right? Yeah. 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 I think that's reasonable at this point. Like there have to be heightened expectations for like what they can draw right now. All right. Uh, so we'll be back in, I don't know. Should we come back sooner for this show, even though it would be before the Noah show? Um, we might have to, uh, cause we might have to let, let, let's see, let's see how the show goes. Like I think yeah. if it's really, so if this really is a great show, and newsworthy, then crazy let's do it. News, yeah. Certain wrestlers show up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We'll we'll be recording an an episode next week for this show then. So, you know, yeah. I, well, I mean, I personally am very excited for the show. Uh, Same. Wait, um, one of the most uh, eagerly awaited shows for me of this year, I think, and I think it'll be a good show. I mean, there's no real crap on it. Um, no, it's. I guess. I mean, I, you know. yeah. A- 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 I mean, like I said, Dan, I think is about as good a guy as you can put against Aoki, but hmm. yeah. <laughs> And like Aoki, uh, Atsuki and Hayato versus Omori and Yoshitatsu, I think is supposed to set something up for those guys, regardless of the quality of the match. Yeah. So it's okay. going to get a big pop anyway when they win. Yeah. And um, of course, I would assume the real world tag league teams because uh, pretty sure the past years they've usually announced them by now. Yeah, like they've, that, they've that, really that... kind of taken the time to announce people, which still I'm makes exactly... me believe that. That what? They're waiting for clearance on Oshino, and that's why like all of these announcements are so delayed this this year. Because they want to see if they can put them in. Yeah, so it starts... Yeah, because we're under a month away from the, the real world tag league starting, because it starts on November yep. 12th. Yeah, at Corkin. Uh, so yeah, We generally know like a month out from like what the teams are. Yeah. So, on that note, we will see you very soon, hopefully. So take care. Music. It's not just part of our daily lives, it's part of our wrestling fandom as well, and it has been for decades. That's where this show comes in. Music of the Mat, the podcast devoted exclusively to the music of pro wrestling, hosted by Andrew Rich. Hey, that's me. Each episode delivers a different topic with a variety of great guests, fun conversations, musical analysis, and of course, a heartfelt pun or two. New episodes drop every other Tuesday on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or your podcast app of choice. Check out Music of the Mat only on the Voices of Wrestling Podcast Network. Hello, Voices of Wrestling listener. Dave Ryan here. Have you ever wondered to yourself, how many hidden gems are hidden away inside the last years of World Championship Wrestling? Have you ever asked yourself how many tenuous gags can be made about the name Mike Enos? And have you ever thought about what it sounds like for two Irishmen to interpret a very chaotic company through its B-show? The answers to all this and more are just a click away. Check out Days of Thunder every second Thursday on the Voices of Wrestling podcast network.